Today we celebrate the Mass of the sixth Sunday of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen, the Lord be with you. My dear friends in Christ, as we come before the Lord today, we give thanks to Him for His grace and blessing as we continue to celebrate these days of Easter. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence and we acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, who suffered and died that we might live, Lord, have mercy. Christ, who rose again for our salvation, Christ, have mercy. Lord, you were with us always, even to the end of time. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of Easter joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in memories, we may always hold on to in what we do. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul and Barnabas and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. The apostles and the elders in agreement with the whole church decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. And this is the letter delivered by them, the apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin. Greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind, we have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. <clears throat> it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, 
namely to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will, do, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to God's word. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because of all the people's inequity, the nations on the earth, you God. O oh God, <clears throat> let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. A reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with 12 gates where 12 angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the 12 tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had 12 courses of stones as its foundation on which were inscribed the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. And the city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its Lamb was the Lamb. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Whoever loves me <clears throat> will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading <clears throat> from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father, who sent me. I have told you this while I am still with you. The Advocate, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it does happen, you may believe the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, <clears throat> during these weeks after Easter, as you will remember, we have been listening in the Gospel to our Lord's words to the apostles at the Last Supper. And he told them something that they did not want to hear, namely that he was going away, that after his suffering and death and glorious resurrection, he would return to his Father in heaven, the feast that we celebrate this Thursday, Ascension Thursday. But he wanted to reassure them. He promised that he will not abandon them. And he gave them these beautiful words. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. If we love him, <clears throat> he will make his dwelling for himself in our hearts. Yes, he will be gone physically from the earth, but he will dwell lovingly in the hearts of all who believe. Now, my dear friends, I wonder, as our Lord was saying those words, was he thinking of someone special? Or shall we say, someone's special? People who were already loving him by keeping his words, and people who had already opened their hearts to make them a dwelling place for him. It is natural for people to think back on those who have touched their lives, and we should do that. I am sure that we do. Thinking back and thanking God for parents and grandparents, friends and neighbors, teachers and priests who have touched our lives and brought us closer to God. And so did Jesus. On the night before he died, <clears throat> he must have thought of the most important person to him in the world, the most special, the person who above all fulfilled his words welcoming God's love into her heart and making her heart a worthy dwelling place for her son. And of course, that is our Blessed Mother Mary. The month of May <clears throat> that we have been celebrating is called the month of Mary, and it is not hard to guess why. Mary is the springtime just as May is the springtime of nature. Mary is brightness and light, just as May is. May is God's beauty unfolding again, and so is Mary, God's beauty unfolding again amidst all of the sins of the world. May is the brightness of light shining through even our deepest darkness. And Mary is the brightness of her Son shining through even the darkness of sin. Think of those words of Jesus at the Last Supper, whoever loves me will keep my word. Is there anyone who did that more than our Blessed Mother Mary? From the moment the angel Gabriel said to her that she would be the mother of the Savior, she welcomed God's word and said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. And from that moment on, she kept living God's word. She was always ready to do God's will in good times and in bad. 
in the joy of Christmas and in the pain of Good Friday. And then think of those other words of Jesus, which we hear today. My Father will love him and we will come and make our dwelling with him. Of all the people in the world, Mary made herself the dwelling place of God. The great Saint Augustine says that the greatest dignity of Mary is not that she is the mother of the Son of God. Her greatest dignity is that she is the first of believers, the first one to have faith in Jesus, her Son. Saint Augustine tells us that before Mary bore Jesus in her womb, she already bore Jesus in her heart, in her mind, in her life. If we want to have Jesus within us, then turn to Mary. She knows us, her children, and she will help us to make our hearts a dwelling place for her son. Of course, our Lord was thinking of his mother. But perhaps he was thinking of another person as he said those words. I am sure he was. He was thinking of that person who kept God's word and made a dwelling place for him in his heart. Now that person <clears throat> is not on the same level of holiness as Mary, but he certainly comes next. For there was no person dearer to Jesus after his mother than that good and just man, his foster father, St. Joseph. The month of May, which is the month of Mary, begins with the feast of St. Joseph model of the working person. We remember that Joseph was a carpenter who offered his work to the Lord. And we remember that Joseph was always ready to hear God's word, to welcome that word, even when it was hard, and to make a dwelling place for Jesus in his heart. Joseph was not Jesus' his father, but to Joseph, that did not matter. Joseph loved Jesus as his Lord, and Joseph loved Jesus as his son. But dear friends, we will never be able to love Jesus as much as Mary and Joseph did. But we must try to do our best. Our own Saint Teresa said, I want to love Jesus more than he has ever been loved before. An incredible statement. But something that we should all strive for. May we try each day, with the help of our Blessed Mother Mary and good Saint Joseph, to love Jesus more than he has ever been loved before. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>
and by the Holy Spirit <clears throat> was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds with the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophet. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, standing in God's holy presence, we present our needs before him saying after each of them, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Timothy Cardinal Dole, and all the leaders of the Church, that they will continue to guide us to walk in the light of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. That following the words of the Gospel today, we will open our hearts to receive the Holy Spirit whom the Lord Jesus has promised to strengthen all who follow him, we pray to the Lord. That during this month of May, the month of our Blessed Mother Mary, we will turn to her and to St. Joseph for protection for our families, especially our children, we pray to the Lord. For an end to senseless crime and violence, and for God's consolation, for the families of those who have been victims of senseless shootings, we pray to the Lord. For the blessing and peace, particularly at this time in Ukraine, that our blessed man Mary, the Queen of Peace, will bring peace to all who suffer from war and civil strife, we pray to the Lord. For our American servicemen and women, serving throughout the world, particularly members of our parish, that they will be protected in safety, we pray to the Lord. For doctors, nurses, EMTs, and health care professionals, police officers, and firefighters, that the Lord will bless them in their service of us all, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and suffering, and for our beloved dead, especially the departed members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Let us offer our own prayer in silence. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people. Guide and protect us in our journey of life, and one day bring us safely home to your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. For the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our 
spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Wash away my iniquity, O Lord, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with this sacrifice of offering, so that purified by your grace, we may be conformed to the mystery of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to proclaim you, O Lord, but in this time of our Lord, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying has destroyed our death, and by rising he has restored our life. And so we join with all the angels and the saints to praise you, as without end we Acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son in the highest. The Lord Jesus now comes to this earth to change bread and wine into his body and blood. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By sending down <clears throat> your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, <clears throat> and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy. 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember us, our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty God, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe through eternal life. Amen. We invite you now to welcome our Lord in spiritual holy communion to your heart.
Before we come to the final prayer and the blessing of the Mass, we give thanks to God that we have joined in the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass today. We remind you always <clears throat> that you are here with us as we offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. We pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and your family with safety and good health. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life and the resurrection of Christ your Son, <clears throat> increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Easter Sabbath, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.